Hi folks, Steve here and welcome to part 2 of this video where I show you how I paint the creepy puppet stand that I built for Mordheim. If you'd like to see how I built this don't forget to go and check out part 1, I'll put a link up in the corner now for you. Ok I'm starting with the model having just hit it with a grey primer out of a spray can. Uh, the reason I did this was it's, it's an auto primer and so it's quite sturdy and it just gives an extra bit of toughness to it before I start painting it. Um, if I had a black one I would have used a black one and it would have saved me the next step but we'll work with what we have. So I'm now just going to get the airbrush and I'm going to give it a coat all over with black. I'm going to do my best to get inside as well to hit as much as that as I, as I can. And then I'm going to come in with some white and we're basically doing a top down spray we're giving it a xenophil highlight. Now you don't have to paint this with an airbrush, I did another little build uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, like a little water trough with a nurgling and some apples in, painted that entirely by brush but using exactly the same kind of techniques as what I'm showing you in this video. Next up we'll switch to brown, this is uh, army paint monster brown but whatever brown you've got and this doesn't have to be 100% uh, smooth coverage, having that kind of spotty coverage really helps sell the, the effect later on. I'm just making sure that there's at least some everywhere that's going to be wood on a finished model. Now I'm going to get a wash onto that wood to start building a bit of depth of colour. For this I'm using a quick shade tone from Army Painter. I'm using a 50-50 mix of the strong tone which is a dark brown colour and green tone which is it's a green colour. Um, use whatever washes you want if you've got the, the GW ones like the Athonian Camo shade and whatever the brown one is then go for that. I want the wash to really focus on the, the recesses, the shadow parts and the lower parts of the model where, where damp is going to rise naturally. Next I'm going to dry brush a bone colour onto the wood and same as with the brown this doesn't need to be 100% coverage, you want a light dry brush, it can be patchy and sporadic, uh, it's again that helps sell this weathered wood look. What you want to make sure you are doing though is catching the the upper areas, any details or sharp edges because it will also help add that highlight to the wood as well as we're painting it so get in and give that a light dusting all over. As you can see it's, it's not a really heavy dry brush, it's nice and light, I'm going again over a couple of areas if I want to boost it and try and really focus on the upper parts or the areas that you are going to want that, that focus of light on. And it is absolutely fine to have those, those patches and some areas where it's a, a little bit higher in value than others because that's going to work really well in giving you that aged wood look. I'm now going to switch over to attacking this cloth material on the top and for that I'm going back to my mummy robes off-white colour um, same brush again, this makeup brush that I use is a kind of a dry brush or an over brush and I'm just wanting to, to hit all the details with that. I'm going quite heavy at this point because I'm going to hit it with a black wash anyway which is going to knock it right back so um, I can just uh, go over that quite easily. Although I'm going at it quite heavy I am still taking a bit of care with this because I, I don't want to have any accidental overspill onto the wood that we've already spent some time painting because that would be really annoying. Okay, so the next step is to get some oil washes on it. So I'm going to start with a burnt umber coloured wash and this is going to go on all the wood and uh, I'm going to slap it on basically to begin with and then I'm starting doing um, up and down motions with my brush and um, that can help develop a sort of streaky look to the wood which is really quite nice. And once I'm happy with that I'll then be moving on to a black wash which I'm going to use on all the cloth that's over the top and the back of it and just make sure that gets in there, gets in all the crevices and that will give us some nice detail. So yeah here we go with the black and you can see I'm not messing about it here, I'm going on nice and heavy. It looks terrible at this point but we're going to bring that back up anyway so don't worry about that, it's going to look really nice. 
the important thing at this point is to make sure that you're getting everywhere with these washes so it gets in all your shadows, all, all the crevices. You want to make sure that you, you don't miss anywhere at this point. Then a little bit of overspill, whether it's a little bit of brown going into the black or black going into the brown, it's not going to be a major issue because the, the oil washes, they're still liquid, they're still, still mobile and so they're just going to blend into each other pretty nice. I'm just working here on the sign that's going to go on the front of the stand. I've already painted it using exactly the same process for the wood and now I want to get some white on it. I'm using the mummy robes off white again and using my dry brush and just stifling it on because I want it to look like worn and faded white paint. So I'm focusing more heavier in the center of the sign and just uh, letting it sort of smooth out towards the edges. You're best taking your time with this, just go light to begin with. You can always go back and add more paint. It's much easier to do that than remove it but then just keep going until you're happy. Okay, so now I'm painting the letters on the side for this. I'm using my smallest detail brush and I'm painting it in black and the black I've got it's, it's quite thinned out uh, you don't want it too thick because you're going to get little like, blobs and globules when you try to paint you don't want it too thin either so it, it just runs out into the detail into the grain of that wood that I'm painting so it's, it's just thinned down to a nice consistency and I'm just taking my time I'm using little strokes uh, I've already got the lettering marked out very lightly in pencil so I'm just following that basically I'm going along and I'm painting the lines in and just take your time, do it nice and easy, don't rush it. Uh, if you make any mistakes you can just go back, get that off-white we were using to, to lay the background on there um, and just correct your mistakes, just tidy it up a little bit. Um, something like this when you're doing this little lettering or freehand designs it really pays to just take your time, do it bit by bit. If you need to go back and correct something, go back and do it. Uh, just don't rush it and you'll get something that you're happy with. And I hope you're also enjoying that fantastic shot of the side of my head there. And here I'm getting the stripes painted in on the, the tarpaulin covering. Um, so I'm using one of these uh, popsicle sticks as a, as a guide, like a ruler basically and um, that's going to give me an idea of the rough width that I want so I want to put two stripes down it and uh, it also helps me get a fairly straight line when I'm, I'm painting it on and um, so yeah I'm just using that as a guide I'm starting off with a darker red I've mixed uh, just a little bit of uh, black or brown in there just to bring it down a little bit and um, first couple of lines that I'm doing with the with the ruler as it were uh, don't need to be perfect because once I've got the, the general outline and the layer of them I'll go back in with my brush and straighten them out um, and just like make sure that they, they connect because the surface is quite lumpy and bumpy so I'll go in and, and make sure that that's a nice solid line and um, once I've got that done for, for both of them I'll just take that paint and fill in the lines get them um, completely filled in and at that point I will then take the original colour of the red so this has not been darkened down any and I'll paint the, the insides of those lines again just to bring that red out a bit more but still leaving the darker area on the side um, just so it looks a little bit darker on the outside a little bit lighter on the inside. I'm now going to go back and do a bit of dry brushing just to bring the, the highlights up again. I'm going to go back to the off-white the mummy robes to work on the white parts of the tarpaulin and just go around and pick all the edges up again with a nice light dry brush. Then for the, for the red stripes that I painted I'm actually going to switch to a sort of flesh colour so this is Vallejo dark flesh um, which is actually quite a light flesh it's not, not too pink. Um, but I'm going to go in with that and do the same light dry brush just to, to pick those um, those top ridges up. And once I've done that, 
I'm going to actually do uh, another quick oil wash um, just to, to help sort of darken the recesses there as well and then I can just use a paper towel uh, to dab off the, the oil wash that's on the, the upper parts of the ridges just so I'm getting the, the wash to sell in the deeper parts to uh, really boost the contrast on that bit. Go, dab, 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 jobs are good. I then just used a bit of super glue to get the sign glue done, and that's pretty much job done. Um, I did paint a little bit more on the um, the two side panels at the front of the stand. I forgot to record that, but I basically just used the same process that I showed you when I was building the sign. I was just uh, taking it easy, just doing nice little uh, strokes of the brush from a little detail brush just to build up the little pattern. Um, that's all you need to do when you're going to do any freehand, just take your time, do it small and just have a bit of an idea of what you're doing before you start. If you need to, mark it on with a pencil uh, and make your job a lot easier if you're just following the lines that you've already put on. And that's it pretty much done. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. As ever, if you found it useful, please let me know in the comments and also feel free to like and subscribe as that really helps the channel. While you're here, why not check out some of my other videos or if you'd like to see more of the models I paint and build, you can find me on Instagram as at Steve's Paintbrush. And that's all for now. Thanks very much. Bye.